Hey everyone and welcome to this video. I'm Inkslaura123 and this is going to be a book themed video. So hello to all my fellow bookworm buddies out there. Okay, so I have done this previously in a video and I thought I would do it again because I really enjoyed it and I hope you will as well. Uh, so basically I have selected 10 books, okay? So these books are from either my bookcases or the piles, the many piles of books that I have in my bedroom. Um, these are all on my TBR, so books that I haven't yet read and I want to read and I will read. Um, and I've just kind of selected 10 at random. I literally was just like, right, this one, this one, this one. And what I'm going to do is tell you about them, um, tell myself about them, like give myself a bit of a refresh of what they're about. And also I'm going to read the first paragraph from each book that I show. And it's just a kind of like, I don't know, little taster, little teaser to see if like a kind of prediction, if I will like it or not. Um, and also, as I say, just to kind of refresh my mind of what these books are about. So hopefully it will give you some ideas for books that you'd like to read yourself as well. Um, I have a nice little mixture of genres here. So I'm going to put my glasses on. By the way, I will say sorry in advance. I apologise in advance. Uh, two things. First of all, if you can hear the sound of like gurgling water in the background, I'm really sorry. Our toilet has broken. And our bathroom is down the end of the hallway and yeah it's it's really annoying it's really noisy you might not even be able to hear it but if you can i'm sorry because it is a very annoying sound at first of all i was like oh the sound of water is quite relaxing and then it was like it's not relaxing anymore it's really irritating <laughs> so we're waiting for the plumber to come and fix it second thing i want to apologize if i'm not my normal self is because i don't know how i've done it but I have like, I don't know, like pulled a muscle or a trap nerve or something. I don't know, but it's really painful. Um, like around this kind of area on my arm and shoulder, etc. I don't know how I've done it. But anyway, so yeah, it's really hurting me at the moment. Um, you would be like, why are you filming at this exact moment in time? You don't feel good, Laura, and there's a noisy toilet in the background. Well, I just fancied filming. I wanted to film all day. And I was really excited to do this video because I love talking about books and stuff. So there we go. Okay, let's get started. The glasses are going on. There we go. Um, also, I've asked my lovely fiance Nathan to pick me a book at random as well. So oh, here it is. This is the one he has selected. Should we start with that one? Let's start with this one. So this is The Things We Don't See by Savannah Brown. Um, I'd not heard about this on booktube or anything um, I literally was in Waterstones one day saw the cover and was like oh that's nice read what it was about and thought oh actually that sounds my cup of tea um, also doing this type of video it kind of you know gives me ideas for books I want to read sooner rather than later kind of thing like if any of these books that I've selected randomly really appeal to me I'll you know kind of push them forward on my TBR as well um, so I'll read the back to you. I've got this little, um, hold on, let me press it. There we go, a little light clipped on here so I can read better because the lighting in this room is mm, not very good. Okay, so uh, it says, Over 30 years ago, young and promising singer Roxy Rains disappeared. The people of her hometown, the tiny island resort of Sandown, are reluctant to talk about it, proclaiming Roxy a runaway. 17-year-old Mona Perry is convinced there's something more sinister at play. Armed only with a suitcase and a microphone to record her findings for her podcast's listeners, this determined teenager has one hot summer to get, the, get to the bottom of Roxy's disappearance. But as Mona gets drawn deeper and deeper into the strange goings-on of the isolated community, it is clear that nothing is as it seems, least of all Mona's own past. Ooh. I'm loving the sound of this and the fact that it's got like the podcast thing in it is really cool. I love books with like podcasts and stuff. Um, Courtney Summers, uh, Sadie had that kind of podcast vibe. and I love that book. And I've read others um, similar where there's podcasts and stuff in it. So, oh, oh, OK. So let's get to this first little paragraph. I was originally going to read out the first page of each book, but I thought that would take too long and you'll just get bored. And also it's kind of exciting just having a little snippet 
like a tiny snippet of that first paragraph and I know some are going to be longer than others but it's all part of the mystery involved uh, it says part one who is she if not everyone else is okay oh cool all right so the first little bit is about um, the actual episode of the podcast so that's cool how to disappear episode 21 narrator the year hold on <laughs> put it in front of the light that helped the year is 1986 and if my demographics are anything to go by you're not there how to disappear i really like the sound of this one and if i'm being completely honest i forgot i had it which is what happens with my mini books that i've got they go on the piles or on the bookcases i just sadly i just forget about them but seeing this again it feels like it's been drawn to me you know for a reason and what makes it even weirder this is the book that nathan selected right and he was actually born in the year 1986 which is when this main character roxy um went missing this is i just yeah i think this is gonna be really good i think i'm gonna have to read that sooner rather than later i think i'm gonna have to read that very very soon because it just sounds really good thank you nathan <laughs> okay um next up let's where should we go next okay i've just literally got all the books on the floor um the coldest touch by isabella sterling or isabel sorry isabel sterling um i love this front cover like the pastel coloring is just gorgeous and uh loving those long black nails and that very kind of gothic looking hand uh death drew them together life could tear them apart this one I actually purchased off a girl on Twitter who was selling her books that she was kind of unhauling. She put a picture up of all these books and she was like, look, does anyone want any of these? Let me know. And I looked at the pictures and I was like, hmm, read that one, read that one. Don't really want to read that one. But, oh, you've got that one. Uh, so I literally, I was like messaging her within an instant going, I have the coldest touch. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is a signed copy of it as well, which is great. I like getting signed books. Uh, and it's a fairy loot exclusive edition. I've never had like fairy loot or anything like that. I've never had any of the um, like the bookish subscription boxes. I'd love to get one. But anyway, so I'll tell you about this one. It says Elise is cursed. Every time she touches someone, she experiences how they will die. And when she predicts but is unable to prevent her brother's death, Elise is desperate to escape her terrible gift. Then she meets Claire, a vampire tasked with helping Elise master her rare powers and recruiting her to the Vow, a secret organisation determined to protect the paranormal world at all cost. At first, Elise is reluctant to work with a vampire, but when she predicts a teacher's imminent murder, she is determined to stop the violent death. As Elise and Claire grow closer, Elise begins to wonder, can she really trust someone tasked with securing her loyalty? Someone who could so easily kill her and someone who might hold the key to unravelling her brother's mysterious death. I like that. I like the sound of that. I love like paranormal stuff. YA paranormal is just so cool. Um, and I have read her other book, which was uh, These Witches Don't Burn. I really enjoyed that. So should we, should we have a little look at that first paragraph? Okay. It says... A girl made of stone and masks and broken glass sits alone at her desk in her new apartment in a town far from home. The girl is used to being alone, used to wanting things that she cannot have. A family, friends who care about her more than the favours they request. I like that. I like the writing style, actually. I just like that kind of, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. That's good. That's good. Um, let's go with this one next. This is Eight Detectives by Alex Pavesi. Pavesi. Um, this one I picked up ages ago in Sainsbury's. I remember going in for milk and coming out of a book. It happens. If you're a bookworm, it happens. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is going to be my cup of tea. Even though I do like crime, mystery, thriller kind of books. I don't know. It's set in the 1930s, which, uh, I don't know. We'll see. So, I'll tell you what it's about. It says, All murder mysteries follow a simple set of rules. In the 1930s, Grant McAllister, a mathematics professor turned author, worked them out, hiding their secrets in a book of crime stories. Then, Grant disappeared. 
Julia Hart has finally tracked him down and she wants to know what happened to him. But she's about to discover that good mystery can be murder to solve. I do like the sound of it. It sounds intriguing, but as I say, set in the 30s, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not really good with those kind of historical, like, mm, I don't know, we'll see. I do like the cover, though. The cover's pretty cool. Oh, look, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's have a look. I know this has had quite rave reviews as well. People seem to really like this. So the first page says Spain, 1930. The two suspects sat on a mismatched furniture in the white and almost featureless lounge, waiting for something to happen. Between them, an archway led to a slim, windowless staircase, a dim recess that seemed to dominate the room, like a fireplace grown to unreasonable proportions. The staircase changed direction at its midpoint, hiding the upper floor from view and giving the impression that it led up to darkness and nothing else. Hmm, okay. Oh, I'm intrigued. I like the writing style. Um, okay. Yeah, this is just... I don't know. We'll see. I'll definitely give this a go, but it's going to kind of be one of those that will just probably go back on the bookcase for a while. Um, I mean, it could come up in my um tbr game that me and nathan do every month i always do if you're new here by the way hello <laughs> i always do um my reading wrap up for the month and i add on the tbr game at the end of that video so basically i have all these little pots uh filled with books names of books that i own that i haven't read my, my tbr books and yeah basically it's a game we roll some dice and whatever dice um numbers that cor corresponds with a box it's that kind of genre that i read from anyway watch the video i'm probably not explaining it very well but um yes yeah, so obviously a mystery book does get chosen every month so it could get chosen from that but it's not gonna be one that i'm gonna pick up anytime soon i don't know anyway i mean let me know if you've read it and you think it's really really good like obviously it might change your mind okay so the next one i've selected is this one here and this one I literally got a couple of weeks ago from Waterstones. It's by Marie Ratoski and it's called Real Easy. Um, this is a hardback. I do, I, I prefer hardbacks really, even though I do like paperbacks as well. Let me know in the comments section, are you a paperback person or hardcover, hardback, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is set in the 90s, which is pretty cool. I like books set in the 80s, 90s. So it says it's 1999 and Samantha has danced for years at the lovely lady's strip club. She's not used to taking anyone under her wing. After all, between her disapproving boyfriend and his daughter, who may as well be her own child. She has enough to worry about. But when Samantha overrides her better judgment to drive a new dancer home, they are run off the road. The police arrive at the scene of the accident, but find only one body. Georgia, another dancer, is drawn into the investigation as she tries to assist Holly, a, detective's, a detective with a complicated story of her own. As the point of view shifts from dancers to detectives and club patrons, the women round up a list of suspects, all the while grappling with their understandings of love and loss. As they get closer to the truth, they must each confront a fundamental question. How do women live their lives knowing men can hurt them? This is going to be gritty. This is going to be gritty. Um, yeah, I think it's a really interesting, like, you know, place for a, a story to happen. Like, that, you know, the dancers in this strip joint. And, um, yeah, I think I've read a review where someone said, like, each chapter is literally from a different dancer's point of view. Like, the role they play as the dancer, but also their own kind of story, their own lives and stuff. Um and then you've got the whole like the tech detective thing and yeah i just think it sounds really really good it's quite a slim little hardback as well that wouldn't take me long to read i could probably get that done in just over a day i reckon if it's really good i tend to find that i read thrillers quicker than any other genre um like if i'm reading a romance or whatever a fantasy it just seems to take me longer but if i'm reading a thriller because i'm so like into it and so excited and want to know what happens i do read those a lot lot quicker um, so let's have a little sneaky peek of that first paragraph. Okay, so it says Samantha in brackets Ruby. Oh, it's only a, it's literally a tiny bit. Um, 
It says, you're so pretty, it makes me want to go home and punch my wife in the mouth. Okay. Ooh. It's gonna be it's gonna be a dark book, I think. I mean it does say constantly how it's very kind of gritty, raw. Yeah. Be interesting to get into the mind of, of the dancers and what they go through and why they got into that kind of state that they're having to be like, you know, strip joint dancers and be around like slime balls. Um okay. Okay. I think it's gonna be gritty. I like it. Um, next up, we're going to go with a library book. This is one um, that I, I'm literally doing a little challenge. I set myself a challenge of reading an Ag Agatha Christie book a month. So one a month. This is going to be the book that I read for uh, March. Yeah, March. I actually forgot what month we we're in. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is Death on the Nile, which I know is really, really famous. And, you know, I've embarrassed to confess that i've never read it this will be my first time ever reading it um i literally got into reading agatha christie books uh last year in december i did a buddy read with the lovely mini book chats who is amazing we read uh, hercule poirot christmas book it was so good and i kind of vowed after that i said you know what every month i'm gonna read one agatha christie book i just you know so i did try miss marple i wasn't particularly keen on miss marple book um so i'm probably not going to go with those but i do like the pyro books and i do like agatha christie's like standalone mystery crimes as well so i'll just kind of stick to them but yeah i i know this is a film and i really want to see the film especially it has my favorite actress in it gal gadot gal gadot is just gorgeous and beautiful and wonderful and strong and sweet and i love her so much and i do really want to see the film but i wanted to read the book first i don't know i don't know why i just I just really wanted to kind of read it and then see it come to life on the screen. Um, so let me read back to you. It says, a cruise down the Nile on a river streamer sounds like the perfect way to get away from it all. But the tranquil, warm darkness of an Egyptian evening can change fast when the air is thick with hot passions and cold malice. Temperatures rise when the first passenger is shot and Hercule Poirot must abandon the mysteries of ancient Egypt and focus on altogether deadlier matters. I think this is going to be so good. And it's got a list here on the back of all the Poirot books. And there's just so many, which is great. Uh, if you are an Agatha Christie fan, if you've read books by her, please let me know in the comments section uh, down below if there's any certain books by her that you'd recommend that are like, really, really good. Because I'd, I'd love to like get your feedback. And if there's any books that you think, oh, that Agatha Christie book is amazing, you know, let me know. Oh, I forgot to read the first bit, didn't I? I'll worry about myself sometimes. Okay, so yeah, this is the um the first paragraph. Okay, so it just says Lynette Ridgeway, that's her, said Mr. Burnaby, the landlord of the Three Crowns. Doesn't really give much away, does it? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just I'm really excited to read it. Another Agatha Christie book for me. Um, okay. Next one I have chosen is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Marino Garcia. This cover is so pretty. Such a lovely cover. Um, I loved Certain Dark Things by the same author. She also did Mexican Gothic, which is more well known. But if I'm honest, I didn't really enjoy it that much. Like, it was just okay. But Certain Dark Things, if you're into like vampires and stuff, like, check it out. It's such a good book. Um... And yeah, after I read that, I kind of went on this kind of I want to read everything this author does kind of trip. So, yeah. Um, do you want to know what it's about? I'll tell you. It says the jazz age is in full swing, but Cassio P. Tun is too busy scrubbing the floors in her wealthy grandfather's house to do more than dream of a life from her small town in southern Mexico. Until the day she accidentally frees an ancient Mayan god of death who offers her a deal. In return for Cassiope's help in recovering his throne, he will grant her whatever she desires. Ooh. From the jungles of Yucatan, is that? Yucatan? To the bright lights of Mexico City and deep in the darkness of... Oh no, is that Exab Exabala? Exabalba? Balba? Anyway, the Mayan underworld. Uh, Cassiope's adventure will take her 
on a perilous cross-country odyssey beyond anything that she's ever known. Success will make her every dream come true, but failure will see her lost forever. Ooh. I didn't think it sounds so good. I've said that about all of them, haven't I? But no, I think it sounds so good. And um, it's historical fantasy at its best, apparently. And it's supposed to be wondrous and magical. Uh, so I'm all for this. I just think this sounds so different than anything I normally read. And I like that. Sometimes I, I like setting myself a challenge of, you know, reading things that I just haven't read before. Because it just kind of you know, opens my eyes to different types of stories and stuff. I love the fact that, you know, she meets this kind of ancient Mayan god of death. And, you know, he offers all these things. And, yeah, I like this. That sounds cool. All right, first paragraph. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sorry I don't see myself. Um, honestly, it really, really hurts. I don't know what I've done. I mean, I did go shopping this morning and carried some like, heavy, heavy bags and stuff. But, like, I don't know. Maybe I've just, like, moved funny. Ugh. Ugh. I'm not one to moan. <laughs> okay let's read this first paragraph oh this is quite a big first paragraph so here we go some people are born under a lucky star while others have their misfortune telegraphed by the position of the planets cassio p tun named after a constellation was born under the most rotten star imaginable she was 18 penniless and had grown up in ukamil is that a camille a drab town where mule drawn rail cars stopped twice a week and the sun scorched out dreams. She was reasonable enough to recognise that many other young women lived in equally drab, equally small towns. However, she doubted that many other young women had to endure the living hell that was her daily life in Grandfather Cyrilo Levia's house. So obviously her granddad, he's not nice to her. Um, yeah, I think this just sounds so cool. I like that whole, um, what was it? Born under, is it named after a constellation? Born under the most rotten star imaginable. I just, yeah, I think this is just going to be really, really good. And the thing with Sylvia Marino Garcia's books is her characters I love. Um, I always feel really connected to her characters and actually like care about what happens to them kind of thing. So here's hoping that'll be good. Um, okay, we've got one, two, three, four left. The next one is by Benjamin Zephani, Zephania. Stefania, I'm so sorry, I'm terrible at pronunciations, I apologise, but Benjamin Zephania is how I would say it, Gangster Rap, this one I got ages ago, um, I think it says here, hold on, 2018, yeah, so I think it was a World Book Day book in uh, March 2018 this come out, and yeah, I remember getting it in Waterstones and I was like, oh that looks cool, so it says here, Ray, Tyrone and Prem, three boys who aren't easy, who attract trouble, who don't fit in, but they know what they want and they've got the talent to back it up. What happens to boys like them? How do they get their words heard? If they're lucky, maybe they'll get a chance to shine. Um, okay, I'm really interested in like books that feature music as well and stuff. There's a little um, bit from the author here that says, for those who care, for those not here nice okay right the first paragraph it says chapter one school what school ray was woken up by the sound of his parents shouting at each other downstairs he pulled the duvet over his head so that he could not hear them but after five minutes his alarm clock rang anyway and he was forced to face the day he dragged himself out of bed went to the top of the stairs and shouted give it a rest will you his parents heard him but carried on I've been there before. Um, yeah, I mean, my mum and dad used to row a lot. Um, and there was many times I would literally be up here just crying in my bedroom and then I'd shout down, will you stop shouting at each other? So that was kind of like, oof, flashbacks there. Um, and yeah, I think it sounds really good. I think the story sounds good. Um, this one, I'll definitely bring up my TBR list, um, like bring it forward kind of thing. So I think it sounds really good. And you know, I'm fascinated by these characters. They sound really interesting and I want to know what they've been through and how music helps them and, and stuff. So I want them to, you know, get a lucky break maybe with their rapping and singing and stuff. So 
we will see it says here the moral of the hip hop is the hip hop never does stop because it travels from the bottom and it goes right to the top <laughs> it's pretty cool yeah i like that sounds good next up i have a ya thriller again another thriller i love thrillers uh this is they wish they were us by jessica goodman i know this has been out a little while but i only got it in the last few months um so it says it's a miracle anyone gets out of high school alive everything about the lives of jill newman and her friends looks picture perfect glossy untouchable destined for greatness oh sorry <laughs> they have the best part is the highest grades and the admiration of the entire school this is going to be jill's year she's sure of it but a tragic event is threatening to resurface three years ago jill's best friend shalia was killed by a boyfriend graham he confessed the case was closed and jill tried to move on but when Jill starts getting anonymous texts proclaiming Graham's innocence, her perfect senior year begins to shatter. If Graham doesn't, if Graham didn't kill Shalia, who did? Jill vows to find out, but someone will do whatever it takes to make sure the past stays buried. Ooh, yeah. I honestly, I've heard really, really good things about this thriller. I love the um the cover as well, with like the little necklaces there, and then that last one is like broken and yeah this is gonna be good i've got a good vibe about this I've got a good feeling about this one okay let's go first paragraph says it's a miracle anyone gets out of high school alive everything is a risk or a well-placed trap if you're not done in by your own heart so trampled and swollen you might fall victim to a totally cliched but equally tragic demise a drunk driving accident a red light missed while texting too many of the wrong kind of pills but that's not how Shalia Arnold went. Oh, it's got me intrigued. It has got me intrigued already. How did she go then? What happened? Who did it? Oof, yeah, this is another one that I just want to... I just want to read all these at one, one go. Just read them all now. Okay, um, two left. So I'm going to go with American Dirt, first of all. This has been really recommended to me by so many people. Um, I know one of my viewers has said, like, this is one of her favourite books of, of the year that she read it. And I just, yeah... I have the hardback version now. I did originally have the paperback version, but I found this hardback in um, a local charity shop for like a pound or something. And I was like, oh, yeah. So I do prefer, as I say, reading in hardback. So, yeah, American Dirt by Jeannie Cummins. And it says, yesterday Lydia had a bookshop. Yesterday Lydia was married to a journalist. Yesterday she was with everyone she loved most in the world. Today her eight-year-old son Luca is all she has left. For him, she will carry a machete strapped to her leg. For him, she will leap into the roof of a, onto the roof of a high-speed train. And for him, she will find the strength to keep running. This is going to be very emotional. I can feel this. I can feel it's going to be super emotional. Um, okay, let's get this first paragraph read out. Okay, American Dirt. Um, chapter 1. One of the very first bullets came in through the open window above the toilet where Luca is standing. He doesn't immediately understand that it's a bullet at all, and it's only luck that it doesn't strike him between the eyes. Luca hardly registers the mild noise it makes as it flies past and lodges into the tiled wall behind him. But the wash of bullets that follow is loud, booming and thudding, clack, clacking with helicopter speed. There is a raft of screams too, but that noise is short-lived, soon exterminated by the gunfire. Before Luca can zip his pants, lower the lid, climb up to look out. Before he has time to verify the source of that terrible clamour, the bathroom door swings open and Mammy is there. Oof. Yeah, this, this is going to be a very powerful read and I think it's going to be very emotional and I think we're going to feel the love that, you know, the mother has for her, her child and, you know, like the hell that she's obviously been through and going to go through and, oh God, okay. It says it's tough, powerful novel, eye-opener, essential reading. Ooh, yeah, this is going to be good. I've got good good, um, good vibes for that one. And the last book I want to show you is from the library. I love getting library books. Um, this is Rena Rossner's The Light of the Midnight Stars. I've not read anything by her before. Um, she did a book called Sisters of the Winter Wood, which there's a little picture, tiny little picture there at the back, if you can see there um i have heard of that one i've not read that but maybe if i enjoy this i'll check out um the other one 
So Spellbinding Tower of Love, Lost Sisterhood and the Tangled Threads of Fate. The reason I got this one is because um, I was looking up books with um, Jewish rep. I am Jewish myself and I love to read books with Jewish rep in. There's not that many. Well, I know there's obviously loads and loads about the Holocaust, but sometimes you just you don't just want to read about Holocaust stuff. You know, you just want to read fantasy or, you know, any type of fiction um, that's also got Jewish rep in. And that that's just from my thing you know um and i saw this one come up on this list and i was like oh okay this sounds interesting um and my local library had it so i was like cool i'll get it um so yeah this is saying it's deep in the hungarian woods the sacred magic of king solomon lives on in his descendants gathering under the midnight stars they perform small miracles and none are more gifted than the great rabbi isaac and his three daughters hannah bookish and calm can coax plants to grow even when the weather is bitterly cold sarah defiant and strong can control the impulsive nature of fire and lavana the fey one can read the path of the stars to decipher their secrets but darkness is creeping across europe threatening the lives of every jewish person in every village and each sister will have to make an impossible choice to survive and change the fate of their family forever so it says here it's mixing Jewish resilience with elemental magic, folklore, love, family. I just, yeah, I think this is going to be really, really good and really different. So I hope, hope I'm right. Okay, there's a little note here. Uh, that's pretty. I like that. Okay, so let's do it. It says there was a time when everyone knew about Tranova. Once it was a bustling market town that sat at the crossroads between the Kingdom of Poland and the rest of Bohemia. Once the King of Hungary, Charles I, visited the town and conducted important negotiations there. But there are stories you don't know. Stories the residents of the town like to keep secret. Tell me the stories. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think this is going to be really, really like magical and full of hope and I like the sound of the like the daughters, like his three daughters. I think Hannah's going to be my favourite because she's bookish and I'm a bookworm, so she's going to be my favourite. Um, this is just such a beautiful cover as well. I love this cover. So yeah, that is Light of the Midnight Stars by Rena Rossner. So now what I'm going to do is ask you, um, what book do you like the sound of the best? What book has, you know appealed to you and what you've heard um and also what was your favorite book cover like what did you just like just going on looks um what cover of, of what book like made you think oh wow that's a gorgeous cover um i am going with cover wise i think i'm going to go with gods of jade and shadow by sylvia marina garcia because i love i love the coloring i love the artwork it's it's just amazing look at that it's just beautiful I like all the stars and stuff and the way she's just like looking up at the stars. Yeah, that's my favourite look, like cover wise. The book that I've had a little snippet of and I'm most excited about is... Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't even lift my arm to lift the book up. Oh, uh, This is the one that I have chosen and I actually am, I think, I'm going to read it next. After the book that I'm currently reading is done. I'm going to have this as my next book. I fancy like a YA thriller with um, a podcast kind of thing. So, yeah, The Things We Don't See, Savannah Brown. Thank you, Nathan. He's playing his game. so yeah. But he did choose this for me. And it's really creepy as well that it's, as I say, um, when, who is it? Roxy Rains disappeared. It was in 1986. And that is the year of Nathan's birth. 1986 in March. So that's weird. So yeah, I think I was destined to read this book. <laughs> um, so anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Please click like, comment, share, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Check out minxlaura 123 asmr my other channel. Links down below. I do videos to help people with anxiety, with insomnia, like relaxation, calming videos. So please check it out. Um, also come follow me on the socials, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Links down below. And... Um, if you are on Goodreads, come and follow me as well. I love Goodreads. It is, without a doubt, my favourite app. I love it. I'm on it pretty much every day. 
um, whether it's reading reviews or whether it's updating my own progress on the books I'm reading, adding books I want to read. You know, I'm, I'm just always on Goodreads. So come and follow me if you are as well. <laughs> uh, as ever, the link is down below to my Goodreads. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, let me know in the comments section what book you're currently reading, if you're enjoying it or not. And hopefully next time you watch me, I won't be as miserable. I'm not miserable, miserable. It's just this, I don't know what I've done to myself. I do have a habit, as I say, of lifting really heavy bags when I'm shopping. And I did lift, yeah, I did lift a heavy bag today. It could be that. And that noise of the toilet is driving me insane. I just... I hope it's not going to go on for like hours. <laughs> Hurry up, plumber. Get here and fix the toilet. Anyway, right, listen. You're all amazing. Thank you for watching. Happy reading. I'll see you soon.